Hi guys, welcome to the video and today we've got Jamie who is uh, from Minor Accounting and he's going to be going through your questions about crypto tax. If you're a basic rate taxpayer, you now would have to pay 18% and if you're a higher taxpayer, you would then pay 24% and that is immediate. Absolutely, yeah. So initially, thank you for having me. I'm the Director of Crypto Taxes at Minor, so we uh, certainly know what we're talking about. Feel free to look us up. Uh, you're absolutely correct. So the basic rate taxpayer went from a 10% capital gains tax rate to 18. Now, although that's still lower than the 24% for higher rate taxpayer, the actual percentage increase is 80%, which is a huge increase if you really think about it. Now, most people wouldn't be in that bracket that I find, especially for my clientele who come to me, that tends to be a, a lot higher, uh, more highly exposed to the crypto space, shall we say. So that's the change from the basic rate taxpayer. And then the higher rate will be from 20% up to 24%, which is a 20% increase in itself. So yes, that is exactly what's happened. Personally, I've been anticipating a much higher tax rate uh, for various reasons. I think it's management from the uh, the government um, and how they've managed expectations and they've done so really well. Because I'm sure you, me and your viewers are sitting there going, yes, only 24%, which is really weird when you're talking about a tax hike and that's celebrating that um you're absolutely correct the three thousand pound annual exemption allowance is still there as far as i'm aware um i've yet to dissect the papers but so far i can't see any information on there to say otherwise don't expect them to reduce it i was hoping that they would, they would increase it with the labor government and how they uh, market themselves and their sort of uh, ideology about the working class personnel that sort of increase would make sense, especially when they've increased the basic rate tax threshold um, for capital gains by 80% up to 18%. The main question I get asked in, uh, in my community, on the comments, in person is, is there any way legally that someone can pay 0% crypto tax? Yeah, there is. There is. One of them is to not be in the UK, I'm afraid. It's that simple. Leave the UK and certain conditions are met. Uh, you'd effectively pay, be not, you will not be paying UK taxes and then you'd pay your local jurisdiction. So if you go somewhere where it is 0%, that's what you'd pay. Dubai is quite a popular one right now, for example. Now, if that's not possible and you're in the UK, the only way you're going to be paying 0% net effect is if you have losses. That's the only real way or appropriate expenses, which again, if they are legitimate, it's not a tax planning way of doing it. It's not plausible because your back pocket, the amount in your back pocket would be significantly decreased, which is why it's an expense. And with capital, it's very difficult to have a capital expenditure compared to an income expenditure. For example, if you're travel and subsistence with your business, you can't do that with capital nine times out of 10 or 99% of the time anyway. So short answer is no, not if you wanna stay in the UK. But please make use of your losses there. So, for example, Matt, many people understand if you make a loss, a capital loss, you can use that as a tax deduction, which is correct. The rules are you can use it in the year that you create them and going forward forever. You can't carry it back. However, you have to make the claim within four years. So we're coming up to the 2025 tax year in the next few months. Once that ticks over, you'll see that what drops off will be the previous um, bull market and the subsequent bear market, which is where people would be buying quite high and then selling low and on occasion, thus creating larger losses. So you really need to start thinking about it now because it's not a short process to go all the way back and deal with it. So please make sure you look at those losses to effectively get that 0% tax rate. It's still going to be 24%, but at least you get relief at 24%. Uh, going forward i've obviously spoken about in videos about contacting you guys for information on crypto tax can you just explain what that involves if people do you know go through the link contact you absolutely so we have about uh, a 250 pound fee for the one hour consultation usually and for those that come through and mention your name we will absolutely waive that for them now, the initial step for that would be a 15 minute quick call prior to this, just to screen people to see who's best to deal with them, because I might not be the best person. We've got a great team. Someone else might be better. And more importantly, just to determine if 
any action needs to be taken. So your viewers are more than welcome to use that. All I ask is that you do so if you think you need our services. Uh, I'd love to have a chat with all of you guys. There's a lot of them. Uh, feel free to do so on Twitter. But for the meeting, if you need our services, that is there for them. Uh, at the moment, I can't see that that will end. It will definitely be there between whenever this comes out and probably the end of March, if not beyond. So yeah, by all means. And to do so, just go onto our website and fill in the type form to get your details on there for someone to contact you, usually myself, and make sure they mention your name. I believe you have a specific link as well that might be somewhere yeah. that you just directly go through. I did ask on the comments for people to give the questions in. For those of us in the UK, hopefully looking at cashing out a large amount of money during this bull run, do they advise which UK banks to use for large transactions coming from exchanges without bank accounts being frozen or suspended? There seems to be a lot of uncertainty in the UK at this at the moment with rules and regulations. Will this be something they offer as part of their accounting package? And then as the follow-up there, when it comes to paying the capital gains tax, do you, does HMRC take crypto as payment? He's mentioning cashing out large amounts of money. And I do know what this person means, absolutely. But please be aware that even if you go crypto to crypto, that is a taxable event. So be very careful. You might have taxes to pay without knowing it. Okay. But when you make gains, which can be when you're cashing out and you go to fiat, yes, this is a big issue. Now, in terms of what banks allow it, uh, Lloyd seem to be okay so far for me personally. But I haven't <laughs> off ramped large amounts because I'm not a very good trader. Uh, Wise might be okay. I know Monzo have fallen off a little bit with what they can do. And there was Revolut that might be okay as well. Now, failing that, there are also OTC brokers that can help. We have a very good connection um, for those that are interested, usually between £50,000, if not ideally in excess of £100,000 at a time, where the rates are similar to those for uh, on Coinbase, for example. Um, but we, for our specific clients, we might be able to get you a more favorable rate. So if you are a client, yes, we can help facilitate this. You'll have to go through some AML checks and deal with their end. They are third party. They're not associated with us in any way apart from uh, giving us a, a better deal for our clients, if you like. So OTC providers is certainly the one. I know there's a few out there. When it comes to crypto, um, sorry, when it comes to paying your capital gains tax, do HMRC accept crypto's payment? Uh, no, they do not. Only GBP. I hope one day they do. Uh, Bitcoin specifically would be lovely, but they do not, which sounds ridiculous when they're expected to pay taxes on your gains, uh, even when you do not cash out or convert to stable coins or fiat. Any tax implications of buying gold with crypto, then selling the gold after? Yes, there is. So gold is an asset class. And uh, crypto is also an asset class. So it doesn't really matter if it's crypto, gold or shares. So in this particular case, if you are buying gold with crypto, implies that you've bought um, crypto initially. So if you were to spend, say, £10 on Bitcoin, and then at the point where it's worth £100, you then dispose of that to buy said gold, you'd have a £90 capital gains there. So please be aware that you would be using if you use the full 100 pounds in the scenario some of that would be tax money so you might want to take some out and put it aside for taxes if you then sell the gold later the new base cost for the gold would be the 100 pounds in the scenario if you were to put it all in and if that goes up to 120 pounds when you sell it there's a 20 pounds uh, sort of capital gain there so yes there would be tax implications there's a lot more around it than just that like your annual exemption amount You've got um, maybe you've got a wife or a husband, civil partnership that you might be able to transfer the assets to to make use of the annual exemption allowance. Perhaps maybe you've got enough that it doesn't matter to uh, whether you want to transfer it or not. Maybe you want to straddle tax years depending on the volume that you're doing this. But effectively, yes, there is tax implications. If you cash out less than the allowed capital gains tax, do you have to fill in a tax return? And I've had similar scenarios of this question on the comments of people saying if i cash out you know it's obviously 3k the allowance if i cash out 2500 2800 per tax year do i have to fill in a, a capital gains tax return this is actually a lot more complicated than it needs to be fundamentally the answer is no you do not 
okay? Because there is no, the criteria to submit a tax return is actually twofold. The first one is, do you have any tax to pay? So if it's under, if you cash out, so that's your proceeds amount, if you cash that out under the annual exemption allowance of £3,000 at the moment, then that means that even with the cost, it's going to be under £3,000. So you do not, you would not meet that criteria. Please be aware, as a secondary note, that if you cash out three grand, but that costs you six grand, you've actually created a three grand loss. Okay, so be careful about when you're saying cashing out. It's not about the proceeds, it's about the gain or loss itself. Okay, so those losses, you ought to um, claim them, but you do have four years to claim them. So you still might not need to. The secondary reason to submit um, details of your crypto portfolio to HMRC is the proceeds threshold. Okay, so please pay attention to this. The threshold is £50,000. And you're probably sitting there going, but Jamie, I only cashed out £2,000. Correct. But you might be trading things left, right, and center. And if you start going, oh, I got to think about the gains, as I mentioned, of £3,000 rather than the proceeds, you could easily breach that threshold. Now, let me explain to you how easily it's done. Matt, let's say, for example, you bought £5,000 worth of Bitcoin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, Let's say the market stagnated. So don't worry about the, the, um, the gain or loss. At some point, you then exchanged it for £5,000 worth of Ethereum. Okay, so your cost is 5000 Your disposal is 5000 And you still have £5,000 worth of asset. So disposal 5000 cost 5000 gain zero. So no tax to pay, but your proceeds are 5000 If you did that 10 times, 10 transactions in the whole year at £5,000 average, you would have breached that 50,000 uh, £50, pound threshold and therefore need to report it even if you have zero gains or a loss in some cases, or maybe a 2,000 pound gain. There's a technical requirement to report that. So we go, right, That's I'm not going to be trading 5,000 pounds a year. Okay, well, let's say you have a trade of an average of five pounds. Okay, five pounds, that's 10,000 transactions at five pounds. Okay, so what if it's ten pounds? Well, that's two thousand five hundred transactions. Do you see how the more you go up, even at hundred pounds, that's five hundred transactions, if my maths is correct, um, where you've breached the threshold, and that's easily done. When the average transactions per year, I would say, is about three to four thousand. So be very wary. So to answer your question, no, you do not. But there might be something else in the peripheries you're not aware of that means you do need to re report it. Or possibly worse, you've not quite used your exemption at all. It's been reported, and can you confirm that exchanges the people use in the UK for any, I don't know if it's withdrawals or it is just transactions over £5,000, they have to report to HMRC? You, you do not need to voluntarily report to HMRC on that basis, okay? You only need to report to HMRC if you breach those thresholds for a start. What you're alluding to, I believe, is the letter that some people would have received saying, can you let me know if you have any tax to pay because of this activity we see? I can't remember if it's 5,000 or whatever the criteria yeah. is, or yeah. whether it's a specific exchange. If you receive that letter, and please note, it's a letter. It's not an email. Most emails will be phishing attempts at this at, for this type of thing. So it'll be a letter for your doorstep. Previously, you could ignore it because it's just a nudge to saying you might do, do what you want. Okay, ignore it, whatever. I don't have to call or you're already dealing with it. Fine. With this new letter, you have to explicitly tell them if you do or you do not have anything to pay. The problem here is you might not know and you'll be going on record stating one way or the other. It's not the end of the world if you get it wrong, if you, as long as you get it right eventually and as soon as possible. I would recommend that you use software to have a rough idea of what's going on so you don't necessarily need a professional at that stage and then make your declaration. If you're not sure, hire a professional, write back to them saying, look, I've got someone involved because I'm not sure. I'll let you know as soon as possible and then let them know. The risk here is where you say, no, I do not, and it transpires you do, and they get to you before you come back to them. That is the real risk because you are categorically committing tax fraud whether you know it or not. So be very wary of those letters and make sure you understand the letter to, to, 
to see if they are specifically asking you for a reply. And if so, you need to give that reply and make sure it is correct to the best of your ability. It's not the end of the world if you get it wrong because it's complicated. We get it. But you have to be honest with yourself and try to figure it out. And that's where people like myself come in. We go, right, let's help you out. We've had an influx of clients lately who come to us and go, I don't know, Jamie, can you do the work and let me know? And sometimes we go, we do the work and we say, you've got no tax, you've got nothing to report. You've got no taxes to pay, but we've done the work and obviously you're going to pay us for that. But at least you have peace of mind and you understand. And if HMRC ever kick off about it, you go, Jamie, HMRC are kicking off about it. Here's the letter. And I go, HMRC, we've dealt with this. Here are the figures. Move on, mate. Do you want to just go through your recommendations to crypto holders in general with their crypto tax, i.e., you know, what they should do as a bare minimum, you know, going forward in terms of recording recording transactions and making sure everything is in 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 good order just so they don't get stung by anything from HMRC in the future? You would need or CSV files, so comma separated uh, value files from the exchanges, wallets, ledgers, however you want to call them, whatever they are. If you're not sure, get it historically for everything. I would advise you to do this every year as a minimum going forward, if not every six months, every quarter, whatever's comfortable for you. Because I know certain exchanges uh, have a time limit on how far you can look back. So it's going to be a bit more of an issue. So that would be the literal bare minimum. I would then advise everyone to get the API keys as well while they're there. Plug it all into some form of software. I know you've got affiliates um, with your with your particular um, branding, as as do we. And it doesn't really matter which one you use. Uh, most of them will be okay, but some of them will be better for the individuals. But put them in there every year. Have a look. Spend a little bit of time just consciously looking at if you need to report anything for that year or things change. That's pretty much it. So get, keep good records in CSV file format and APIs if possible. Put them into software year on year so you've got somewhere to kind of have a look at what's going on. You can do your own bookkeeping if you like and then uh, go from there. Um, a little bit of a plug if I may, Matt. Um, if you've got any further questions that um, you'd like to ask, by all means, of course, comment on the videos. I will personally be on there trying to answer them where possible. My Twitter is always open to these as well for any questions, whether it's DMs or tweets. The tweets will get I'll get to sooner than the DMs, um, but I'll try and get to as much as possible. And that is on Crypto Tax JME. And I also have a little bit of content on TikTok as well at Crypto Tax JME, talking about best ways to save money uh, in your crypto spaces um, for those that are general investors as well as DGENs. Uh, which I consider myself as. Um, for example, I know if you've got some sort of low cap and it shows as million of pounds in your wallet, we all know that once you do cash that out with slippage and everything, especially if you uh, own a big percentage of the market share, you're not going to be cashed out exactly that amount. It's going to be a lot lower. It might be significantly lower. So be wary of all those things. But yeah, those will would be my top tips. And if you need any more, I'll be more than happy to help there, Matt. Cheers for joining us today, and I'm sure we'll uh, definitely speak again. Be more than happy to. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.